Okay, we're going to record this for someone, okay? Someone else who can't be here who wants to watch. All right, so <clears throat> now let me share my screen again. All right, now there are different things that beekeepers use. Now a beekeeper is someone who takes care of bees, all right? When we lived in Michigan, my uh, mother lived next door to a neighbor who had bees and they had this box, just kind of like what you see in the picture here, <coughs> Excuse me. And it was kind of weird riding the, the tractor lawnmower right by the bee box. I didn't want to get the bees angry with me. But um, they had bees like this. And they had these little panels. See this panel here with the bees on it? That's called a super. And there's several of these supers that are, you can see, put inside the, the bee box right next to each other. And the bees build their honeycombs in the super. Isn't that cool? All right. Now, there's some other things that we're gonna learn here, all right? A honey extractor. Now this machine, if you were to <clears throat> look at it directly from the outside, it would look like one of those big thermoses where people get hot chocolate out of, right? But instead, what this machine does is that it extracts, that takes the honey out of the honeycomb. It would be very difficult to try to scoop the honey out of each little comb. It would be very time consuming. So what do the beekeepers do? Well, they take these little wooden frames, remember the super, and they stick them inside the extractor along with the honeycombs inside of them. They close it and they turn the machine on. And what happens is it starts to spin faster and faster and faster and faster. And what does it do? The speed pulls the honey out of the honeycomb. And then it just flows down the side of the extractor into a collection um, bucket right outside. You see that? Yes, Cedric. Is there bees inside? I think they try to take the bees out because it would be very uncomfortable for the bees to be spinning super fast like that. Well, there might be bees, but maybe they have a way of taking the bees out before they start spinning. Yeah, good question though. All right, now, so that's the extractor, all right? Now, what is nectar? Yes, Cedric. That's right, and it's wet and runny, okay? It's not sticky yet, right? So nectar is not honey. It's the liquid that sits in the flower before, the, uh, before it becomes honey. And it's the bee that comes with his long tongue, remember, and it takes the nectar out and puts it in its stomach, special honey stomach, and then goes and it passes back and forth between the other bees, remember? what nectar is. Okay, now let's take a look at this picture. Um, <clears throat> look at this bee, Neve. What do you see on it? What is covering that bee? Pollen. Pollen. Very good. And pollen is like dust. And what the pollen does is that it helps kind of fertilize the flower. So the bee gets pollen on it from one flower and then it buzzes off to another flower and it leaves some of that pollen there and picks up more pollen. And so it starts going back and forth between different flowers with different pollen. That's called cross-pollination, right? Because it's passing it around. Well, that helps create the nectar. Okay, so 
let's go back. What is the super, Cedric? It's that frame you see right there, that wooden frame where the bees build their honeycombs, right? Yep. All right, Neve, what does the honey extractor do? Um, it takes out the honey out of the honeycombs That's and puts right. them into storage. That's right. Very good. All right, Cedric, what is nectar? Drippy and runny, very good. All right, uh, Neve, what is pollen? It's a type of dust that grows in flowers. That's right, that's right. And you know, some people actually are allergic to that. Okay, now, <clears throat> one of the things that we're gonna learn about bees is how they communicate with each other, all right? Cedric, are you, are you done moving back and forth? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna watch uh, another video about how bees communicate. And, there's, and they're a special type of bee. They're called the scout bee. Scouts, remember, are, are um, bees that go out and they look for places where there are flowers or trees or where they can get nectar, all right? And then they come back to the hive and they share the information with other scout bees. So then all those scout bees can go in to this new place and get more, more nectar, all right? So let's um, stop that and... Let us, let me share. Okay, can you see that? Yes. You see? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Yes. Very good, Astrid. Okay. Not now. I can't help you right now, Astrid. I'm teaching a class. Go go talk with mama. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let me see if I can get this now. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. This is how bees communicate. You've probably heard the buzzing of a bee, but did you know that one way that bees communicate is through dancing? That's right, dance. Well, dance plus a few other cues. Bee dancers share information about food like nectar or pollen, water, and tree resin, and about possible nesting sites. For example, when a honeybee finds flowers, she flies back to her nest to tell other bees where food can be found. She brings a sample of the nectar or pollen with her to share with her nest mates. By dancing a certain path and direction, and using vibration, sounds, and scents, the returning bee tells other bees where to go. The first dance is called the round dance. The round dance conveys that food is nearby, within 165 feet. To communicate this, the bee runs around in small circles, suddenly reversing direction to her original course. And remember that nectar the honeybee gathered? During or after the round dance, she often gives food to the other workers so they can taste the quality. Bees can do this with food or water. Simple enough, the round dance tells other forager bees that food is somewhere nearby and the bees can find it. But when food is more than 500 feet away, a bee has to communicate direction and distance to the food. For this, bees use what we call the waggle dance. In this dance, the honeybee runs straight ahead for a short distance and returns to the starting point, forming a semicircle. 
Then she runs through the straight course again. This time, she makes a semicircle in the opposite direction. While running the straight line course of the dance, the bee's body waggles back and forth energetically from side to side. The honeybee also beats its wings to produce a buzzing sound. So how do the other forager bees know how far away the food source is? The amount of time the bee takes to complete the straight run portion of the dance indicates the distance. The further away the food is, the longer it takes the bee to complete the waggle run. For every one second of the dance, the food is approximately one kilometer away. To get directions to the food, the bees can't just pull out their smartphones. Instead, the followers watch the direction of the dancing bees waggle run. In the hive, up means towards the sun. If the waggle dance is straight up, the food is straight towards the sun. If the food is in another direction, the bee runs at an angle that matches the direction of the food outside. Outside, follower bees look at the position of the sun and fly the same angle that the dancing bees showed them on the inside of the nest. Bees are so good at this. They can even account for the movement of the sun any time of day and year. All this dancing does pay off. And not just for the bees. About one third of the food people eat comes from plants that depend on bees. Which means we all benefit from this fascinating form of bee communication, the round and waggle dances. Wow, isn't that cool? And did you ever think, how do bees know where to go? And if a scout bee goes and finds a meadow full of flowers, how does the bee communicate to the other bees? Wow, isn't God amazing that he made it so that bees can communicate with each other? All right. Now, let us continue. <clears throat> to the next thing on our list. We are going to recite some Bible verses now that have to do with honey. Did you know that the Bible actually talks in different places about honey? Here's one Bible text. It's found in Proverbs 24, 13. I'm gonna say it and you repeat after me. Eat honey, my son. Eat honey, my son. For it is good. For it is good. Honey from the comb. Honey from the comb. Is sweet to your taste. Is sweet to your taste. Yeah, so honey from the honeycomb. All right. Uh, okay. Now, the next verse is also found in Proverbs. Just almost one chapter later. If you find honey, if you find honey, eat just enough. Eat just enough. Too much of it. Too much of it. And you will vomit. And you will vomit. Ooh, we don't like that, do we? So. Okay, Cedric. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what the Bible is telling us here? We need to be careful how much we eat or how much of something that we do because too much of a good thing can turn bad. And, the, uh, and King Solomon here in Proverbs is telling us, he's using the example of honey. You eat too much sweet honey, and you will get sick of it. It will make you sick. And if we think about the different things in life, if we do too much of something, it can make us sick, or we can get tired of it. And that's not good. So the best way to, to let something be good is to, to try it or to eat it in small quantities, right? You don't eat all of the, you don't eat all the Christmas cookies once you once you bake them, do you? No. 
you save them over the weeks, right? And you eat a little bit here and a little bit there and you get to enjoy it better. Yes, Cedric. Oh, yes, and you save some for Santa Claus, right? Right, okay. All right, so those are two Bible verses that teach us about honey, but also about how we should live life. That first Bible verse, eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. That is, that is Solomon telling us to eat good things, to pay attention to good things. It can be the book you read. Now, of course, you don't eat books and you don't eat music. But what it's telling you is maybe like, well, you wouldn't eat bad things for you. You would eat good things like honey. Honey is good for you. So maybe read good books and listen to good music, right? Because it makes you a better person. Okay. Let us now go to something else here. Okay, there are three types of bees. Okay, we're going back and forth. Sometimes we're talking about honey, sometimes we're talking about bees, but they're all related. There are three types of bees. Okay, <coughs> the first type of bee is the worker bee. All right, so when you go to a hive, let's say, and you had a little camera and you stuck that camera in there, you would see different types of bees, right? Well. Here is one of them. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Worker bees, they are the smallest bees in a beehive. And they do exactly what their name says. They work. They keep the hive clean. They take care of bee eggs, all right? The queen bee lays bee eggs and they take care of the bee eggs. They take care of the queen bee. And they maintain the temperature of the hive by fanning their wings. So in summer, it can get maybe hot in the hive. So what do the worker bees do? They flap their wings really fast and it fans the air in the beehive and circulates it so that it cools off a bit, right? The worker bees also build honeycombs and the worker bees guard the hive. Wow, those bees are busy, aren't they? Worker bees are super busy. <coughs> and they are super strong. Okay, so if you were to go to a beehive and disturb the bees, what kind of bees might come and try to guard the beehive from you? Worker bees? No, worker bees, very good. They are guarding the hive. All right, now the queen bee. She is the largest bee in the hive. And during her lifetime, she can lay over 600,000 eggs. She is also fed by worker bees, all right? So, yep, yeah, so she, she, she wakes up in the morning and she goes, to the, she goes to her kitchen table and the worker bee, bees bring her her food, right? <laughs> Maybe she claps her, her, little, her little hands in front, right? Well, that's the queen bee. Now there are the drones and the drones have a very important function. First of all, drones are all male bees. They're men bees. And their only purpose is to mate with the queen. And after they mate, they die. And if they do not mate with the queen, the worker bees come and kick them out of the hive. Right? The worker bees say, hey, you're not doing your job. You're not mating with the queen so that she can lay up to 600,000 eggs in her, for her lifetime. You're a useless drone. Uh, I'm going to kick you out, and the and the uh, drone, uh, the worker bee kicks the drone out. 
drone bees have no stingers. So those are probably the kind of bees you want to have land on your finger, right? They can't sting you. So those are the three, bee, uh, three types of bees in a hive. Well, there's also the scouts, right? So there's the worker bee, and the worker bee does what? What kind of work, Cedric? Name one thing that the worker bee does. They circulate the air in the beehive, right? Keeps the temperature even. Neve. Guard the hive. Guard the hive. Anything else that they do? Make the honeycombs. They build the honeycombs. Very good. They keep the hive clean. They take care of the eggs. So they're like babysitters. And they're also the smallest bee in the hive, right? What does the queen bee do? Lay eggs. She lays eggs. Yep. Yeah. She calls for her service. She's fed by the worker bees. Is she the largest or the smallest bee in the hive? She's the largest. Very good. All right. Now, what do the drones do? Try to make what's the queen? That's right. What else do they do, Neve? Um, try to mate with the queen. They try to mate with the queen. And if they don't, what happens? They get kicked out. That's right. They get kicked out. They're not doing their job. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be allowed to stick around. Okay. Well, let's go to our next next uh, slide here. Ooh, the life cycle of a bee. All right. I'm gonna open this link. And we're going to watch that. Okay, stop sharing that. Okay, I'm going to start this over again. Okay, now there's no... There's no words here, so just watch and I will say what is going on, okay? Let's start this again. All right, the life cycle of a bee. It starts out. egg. There it is, sitting inside the honeycomb. See the honeycomb shape? And it can start moving. Well, it grows and becomes a larva. See the larva there. You can see off to the left. There's one that's still, uh, still uh, an egg. Yeah. Yep, they're moving around. They're getting their exercise. It looks like. And then. Oh, they're starting to resemble a bee now, aren't they? They're a pupa. And there they are, getting a little cramped there in the honeycomb. Said it. What's that? Oh, really?
And now we go to a next stage from the larva, it becomes an adult. Kind of like a grown up game, huh? See, they're leaving the comb. Remember, during this time, it's the worker bees that have been taking care of them, right? Okay. Okay, now let's go to the next thing that we have. Yeah. All right, so that was the life cycle of a bee. Now, it's time to taste three different kinds of honey. Did you get different kinds of honey, Neve? Yeah. You did, okay, well, so did we. So I'm gonna invite Cedric to come here to the kitchen with me. <laughs> and Neve, do you have the honey there with you? Um, yes. You do? Can okay. You yeah. Why don't you go get the honey, Cedric? Uh, let me get it. No. Okay, so we have our honey here. We have three different types of honey. And Nave, can you tell us what kind of honey you're going to try first? Um. I'm not really sure. <laughs> You're not really sure. Okay, well, that's fine. Why don't you go ahead and try it? Can you go ahead and give it a try? Was that good? It tastes kind of like syrup. A little bit like syrup. Okay, well, that's interesting. Cedric is going to try some unpasteurized creamed honey. <laughs> tastes good. Okay. All right. And you're going to tell me which one's your favorite, okay? So that was taste number one for both of you. All right, Neve, why don't you go for your second one? I want to try that one. I want to try that one. Mm -hmm. And then that one's going to be like the bear shaped one. Mm -hmm. Just like the one that we have right here. See? Okay, did you try the second one? How was that? Yeah. How was that one compared to the first one? Better. Do you like the second one better? Okay, so yeah. this one. This is regular um, honey uh, that you get kind of. Um, this is the pasteurized. I kind of like it. All right. Okay. All right. Now, Neve, why don't you go for your third one? It's only two we have. You only have two. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. You know, we have one that is pasteurized and one that is unpasteurized. Okay. Well, yeah. fair enough. That's good. Um, yeah, that's the only two we have. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, you know, sometimes it's hard to find different types of honey. Okay. And uh, I had a hard time finding different types of honey myself. Um, so, so, Neve, of those two, which one did you like the most? Second. This one. 
the second one yeah this is the um, unpasteurized one yeah Ooh, okay all right hmm. it's that one well we're going to i'm gonna let's try this one but I was going to try a third one. I like the third one. You like the third one best? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this one that Cedric just tried was um, <laughs> not very informative. It just says natural liquid pure honey, um, which is which uh, we'll, we'll look at um, the different types of honey now. Um, the next slide actually has that. There are different types of honey, okay? Um, there are five types, actually. Um, the first type is called uh, floral, and it's of a floral source, okay? So that means it comes from a specific flower or blend of flowers. Okay. All right. Then there are there are blended honey, and this is um, what most uh, type of honey that we eat. Okay, is blended, and it's based on on different things. Um, it can be based on a certain type of flower um, source that is several different types of flowers in one particular area. Um, it can be based on the type of color of the honey, the flavor, or the, the geographic origin, okay? Does it come from flowers in a mountain meadow versus from uh, an apple orchard, okay? So those are different types of geographic origins, and, and honey is blended together, all right? Then there is what's called polyfloral. Poly means many. Floral means flower, so many types of flower. And this is usually called wildflower honey. And the taste changes from year to year. The aroma and flavor, that is the smell, and the flavor can be either stronger from one year to the next, or it can be weaker, all right? Then there is what is called monofloral. Mono means one floral flower, one flower. And this is made from the nectar of one flower. Um, different flowers give different flavors and smells of honey. So if you have, let's say, from an apple blossom only, that would be monofloral, right? Because it comes just from the apple blossom. But that's different than, let's say, from honeysuckle, which is another type of a flower. So there will be different smells and different flavors between the apple blossom honey and the honeysuckle honey, right? And then the last one, this is a very different kind of honey. It's called honeydew. So instead of nectar, the bees get, you know, when they take their little tongues and they go and they get that runny juice, these bees take the sweet secretions, okay, of aphids or other plant sucking insects. So they take whatever those insects release from their bodies and they make honey out of that. And that honey is usually dark brown in color. It has a richer smell of fruit or like fig jam and is not as sweet as regular nectar honey. All right, so those are the five different types of honey. All right, well, this is basically the end of the, um, of the award for honey and honey bee, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna play the first video, okay? Because I didn't get that in the recording for the, for the individual who asked for us to record. So I'm gonna, re I'm gonna play that so that they have that, okay? Um, and you're welcome to stick around and watch that again. That's how bees make honey. Do you wanna watch it again? Yeah. Would you like to watch it, Neve? Yeah. 
Okay, we'll play it again. Uh, oops, let's stop that. We'll stop share. And now we'll share. How bees make honey. Hi, it's Doug. Honey, that sweet, delicious stuff that just tastes so good. There's nothing quite like honey, is there? Syrup is similar in color and it's sweet, but it tastes different. Someone named Linda has a question about honey. Let's give her a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Linda. I have a question for you. How do bees make honey? That is a great question. The fact that bees make honey is something most of us hear about, but it's not something most of us have actually seen for ourselves. So for a lot of people, including adults I talk to, the whole thing is kind of fuzzy, maybe a little confusing even. Something about flowers and then they come back to a hive and well, something happens. It almost seems like a secret recipe. What is it that bees are doing in that hive? Figuring this out isn't easy. It's not like bees can tell us. And bees are really kind of secretive. They live in a hive. We can't just pop our heads in there and check it out. Plus, they've got those stingers. They really wouldn't be happy about that if we did. But there is a way to get inside a beehive and see what's going on. Can you guess? How could we find out what's going on inside a beehive? Now would be a good time to pause the video and discuss. Okay, you ready? Well, one possibility might be to wear a bee suit where you can't get stung and then use tiny lenses and cameras to look inside the hive. And that is one thing we can do. In fact, even easier than that, many bees are willing to live in hives constructed by people. So if you make clear sides, you can actually watch what they're doing. By creating these see-through hives, scientists have been able to carefully observe what bees do and have unlocked the secret of how bees make all that sweet, delicious honey. If you watch a hive, you'll see bees coming and going. You might know that bees are very busy flying around from flower to flower, then coming back to the hive. But what are they doing? Watch as a bee lands on a flower you'll see it has a little tongue right there. You see that? Here's another video where you can really see the tongue. This one on a bumblebee. Inside of every flower is a tiny pool of sugar water that's made by the plant. This is what's called nectar. It's such a tiny amount to us, it's hard to even notice. But on flowers like this one called honeysuckle, you can actually taste it. It's nothing like honey at this point. It's clear, it's very runny, and only just a tiny bit sweet. But it turns out that bees aren't slurping it because they're thirsty. When they do this, the nectar goes into a special honey stomach for storage. Once a bee gets back to the hive, things start to get a little weird. <laughs> they spit it out again and pass it to other bees, who spit it out and in turn pass it to other bees. And they do this a few times. This part might seem really gross. And scientists were confused by it at first. But by studying the bodies of bees, scientists were able to figure out that inside the honey stomach, bees have a special liquid called an enzyme that, as it mixes with the nectar, makes it thicker and stickier, more and more like honey. So by passing it back and forth like that, bees are adding more and more enzyme to the nectar. This is what turns nectar into honey. Once they've done this enough times, they store the liquid honey into little containers they make out of wax. This is called the honeycomb. Why are bees doing all this? It's not for us. They make all of this honey to feed their babies. For that reason, it might seem mean of us to take honey away from them, 
but almost all of the honey that gets sold in stores doesn't come from wild bees. Instead, people raise bees on farms, just like other farm animals. The bees on farms make much more honey than their babies need. So farmers collect that extra honey and sell it to people. So in summary, bees make honey by collecting a sugary water called nectar from flowers and then allowing that nectar to mix with a special substance inside one of their stomachs. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Linda, for asking it. All right, so there you have it. Now, in order to complete um, and get the uh, award for both the honey and the honeybee, there's two awards that, that we've worked on today. You need to make the craft, all right? And I sent your uh, parents a link um, that will, <clears throat> Um, with the information about the craft and you're going to make uh, like a honeycomb all right and you can even embellish it and have like little bees that you put inside of it okay uh, when you're done with that have your mommy or daddy take a picture and send it to me and I will write that down so that you can complete um, the requirements for the award all right have a great day. Why don't we have prayer together? All right. Are you ready, Cedric and Neve? Let's pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you so much for the beauty of nature. And nature is so different, so many different things. And we have studied bees and honey, and we see how bees make honey, we see how bees communicate with each other, we see the different types of honey that there is, and we are just so amazed at the details that you put into every little bit of creation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful, beautiful, natural world that we can enjoy and take care of. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Don't forget to send me pictures of your craft. I will. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>